made a video recently, a, a couple months ago, about the unwritten rules of burlesque for the audience. I talked a little bit about burlesque and what to expect and to just kind of follow the, the groove. It can be quite difficult at times to really pinpoint some of those guidelines or rules, like what's strict and what's flexible and what's dependent on the show. I left quite a few things out. So I'm extending the video a little bit more. This is now part two. These are some of the, the rules uh, that I'm going to say are just good to have as a little platform for yourself for any burlesque show you go to, whether it's in a fancy venue or your casual bar that you might exist in. First off, uh, the big one, the biggest thing that absolutely you have to follow is the stage name. It is really important that any show you go to, whether you know a performer personally outside of burlesque, make sure to always, always, always use their stage name. They might correct you if you do use a, use their real name because we do have our own burlesque names for a reason. A lot of it is because it takes us into this universe that you don't see and as soon as you walk through that venue door into the show, you are instantly captured in a new atmosphere, a new magical, whimsical, mythical, mystical, ominous space, and it is so, so beautiful. As I have mentioned in my last video right here, I was talking about burlesque names and how they are an extension of ourselves. And so if you want, you can check it out if you want to learn a little bit more about how to come up with your own burlesque name. And another question that we get all the time is, so what's your real name? Cherry Cheeks. Again, our burlesque names are there for a reason. It's also for our own safety. Don't ask for the real names. Don't lose the illusion. Appreciate the illusion. You may have a very fun experience in the audience, especially if you're in the front row of an audience. You may have a costume piece go flying your way. Costume pieces can be a souvenir. You might think it's beautiful, this gorgeous glove from your very first burlesque show. You're never gonna let it go. You're gonna cherish it, put it on a frame on your wall. And I gotta tell you, that glove is going back to the performer after that show. Make sure to keep it safe if it lands on your table or in your lap. And just make sure to give it back to the stage kitten when they're cleaning up the costume pieces after that act. They might come into the audience if they saw the costume piece go flying and go look for it. So our costumes are very expensive. Even the cheap ones, if they have rhinestones, those rhinestones are usually twice the price of the glove. We do the same acts over and over and over again, and we travel with those acts, and we don't want to have to replace costume pieces every single time. I highly recommend that you keep your memories as your souvenir. And speaking of memories, at the beginning of the burlesque show, I've mentioned this in a couple of my old videos, including the previous audience video, that an MC will often give a little bit of housekeeping before the show. That might include something like a land acknowledgement, acknowledging whose land and territory you're on, of the indigenous nations from that area, and also housekeeping, like where are the washrooms? What is protocol for, for those shows? Are you allowed to take photos? For the most part, you're not going to be allowed to take photos or video. Sometimes if you are a friend or a partner of a performer on stage, if it's pre-arranged with the producer beforehand, you might be able to take photos of your partner who's performing on stage or video so that they can use it for their own reflection after the show. But unless you've been pre-approved by the producer, you are not allowed to videotape or take photos. And usually if you are allowed, the MC will say, take all the photos you want, take video, promote us, make sure to tag us on social media. If you know a performer, one of the big things is do not go backstage. The backstage area or the green room is where performers go to get ready to mentally prepare themselves or decompress. And of course, because it's burlesque, change. Maybe at the very beginning before doors open or at the very end after all the show is finished and the performers are gone, you might be able to go backstage to help bring bags. But again, that has to be pre-approved by the producer. Vera Valentina actually has a little clip of a, in one of her videos talking about backstage and no performers going backstage. You can check her video out down below. Make sure to put your phone away. You want to be present in a burlesque show Again, it's going to be very different at a club or a bar, but most shows you're going to want to have your phone on silent 
you're gonna want to have it put away and not texting or on YouTube or TikTok. Maybe you have childcare or someone who to that you do have to have an emergency line for, then make sure you have a plan in place, whether that's your phone on vibrate and you can leave, go outside to check your phone if there's something important. For the most part, you're there, it's live performance. Most shows, you paid money to be there, so you might as well use your money's worth. And performers are going to be walking around the audience, whether they're mingling or whether they're performing and in the audience during a performance. And one thing to know is that burlesque does not equal consent. Do not touch a performer without their consent. And most of the time that will go the other way as well. Performers will check for the audience members. If an audience member looks really excited, then they will go in and maybe stroke their face, maybe put a boa around their neck. But if it's someone who looks really uncomfortable, they might just give them a wink and then and speaking of consent and tipping, tip your performers. There is no one standard. There are lots and lots and lots of different ways to tip. So if you have a show that's allowing tipping, sometimes you'll be tipping performers during their performance. So while they walk through the crowd, some shows will have a tip jar or a tip bucket in the lobby near the merchandise. And sometimes they'll have a routine, like one act for tipping and a performer will go into the audience, do a little dance with the tip jar or a few performers will be in the audience with a tip jar and you just have to give them your money in those jars as they come through. The MCs are fantastic for training the audience and getting them used to that and talking about how to tip at those shows because again, even in the same city, it's going to be very different. If you are at a show that has tipping, make sure to tip, bring the money you can, uh, bring cash and have a good time. A lot of performers will go out and, and mingle with the audience at the end of the show or during intermission. Again, check things out see how people are liking the show. It might take a while for you to actually say hi <laughs> to a performer, or it might take a while for them to get to you, or they might not get around to saying hi to you. I like to bounce. I'm a very, very bouncy performer. When it comes to mingling after the show or during intermission, I like to talk to people I know. I like to talk to people I've never met before and get to know if they've been to burlesque and what they thought of the show. Don't be offended if a burlesque performer comes up to you and they're only there very briefly. Burlesque performers are on even after they're off the stage. Make sure to know your alcohol limit. Every show is gonna be different. Again, if you're at a theater show, those are not shows you want to party at. Those are shows you can drink. Sure, that's okay as long as it's part of the venue, they allow alcohol, then you can drink and have a good time. But it's not a club environment, so you're not there to party. But if you're at, say, a club or a bar, sure, you can drink, let loose maybe a little bit more, but still be aware of your own alcohol limits and make sure you are not drinking more alcohol than that causes you to push boundaries or ignore consent. Going along with that as well, whether it is a theater or a club or a bar, it does not matter the venue. Do not go on stage with the performer ever unless it is audience participation and the MC invites you on stage. However, if you are there and it, there's a performer doing an act and you decide you get really into it, again, you're at a club maybe and you're like, maybe had a couple of drinks and you're really feeling the groove and you want to get on stage, do not do that. The performer is there to get paid, they are working. And as well, it's also safety for yourself. A lot of burlesque performers might have choreography. Some people might do flips or go into the splits or do high kicks or like even voguing and move their hands around. I don't know who you are if you come on stage with me, so I don't know how safe I'm going to be if I have no idea what your intentions are. And also at the same time, I don't wanna hurt you and I don't wanna have to pay attention to you while I'm performing and perform around you. When I have an, an act to already focus on and I want to focus on the audience and getting them sharing that exchange of energy with the audience in their chairs or their tables or on the floor or wherever the audience is existing for that show. Stay in your seat or stay on the dance floor or the designated audience area and then we will all have a good time and we'll all respect each other's space. And last but not least, because people drink, whether it is alcohol or water or soda, we got bladders. We gotta go to the washroom and we can't always control that. Depending on the venue again, if it's a club or a pub or a bar, 
do what you need to do, go to the washroom whenever. If you are at a show that's a cabaret kind of venue or you have tables to set up, I recommend that you get up to go to the washroom either during intermission or after the show. I highly recommend that if you do go to the washroom during a show, try to go to the washroom while the MC is talking and not during a performance just because there's some things you might not want to miss. Well, the MC is often doing jokes or trying to do fiddle or introduce the next act. So that is a really good time to take advantage. Go to the washroom if you can. And then when you come back and if you see that there is a performance already started again, just hang out at the back for a little bit or on the side. And once the MC starts talking again, then you can go slip back into your spot and continue watching the show. And that's it. That is the end. Some of those rules that I said today are repeated from the previous videos, but I hope this one has kind of everything all together for you as you need it. If you're wondering what it's like as an audience member, you can check out some of my other videos talking about what to expect at a burlesque show and also what's the atmosphere like at a burlesque show. Otherwise, I know I probably forgot some things, so if there's anything I forgot and you're a burlesque performer or a frequent audience member, leave them down below. What are some things that you think are important for audience members? was to know at burlesque shows or drag or comedy or whatever performance you're used to otherwise i'll see you next time bye